Hi Gordon, nice to meet you here Hi, at uh, Brooklands. Um, this is fantastic. I mean, we have here, I know it's a replica, yeah. but it is built as like the original, which doesn't exist anymore. So this is 1901 Royal Enfield, single cylinder. You're gonna tell me about it, and uh, we'll walk around it as well, but this sure. is so interesting. Well, it's a faithful working replica of the original 1901 Royal Enfield. Sadly, none have survived. Um, and in 2020, uh, uh, a group of young engineers working at Royal Enfield's UK Technology Centre um, decided that they would build this replica in honour of that original bike. Brilliant. We had so little to go on. We only had two photographs, a couple of advertisements, and one tatty old brochure that was falling apart <laughs> at the edges. So we had these uh, two photographs, we chose the best, and we projected it onto a full-size screen, and then we started mapping out all the angles from there. So this is to scale? Yeah, to Literally scale, to scale yeah. and then we put it into CAD, and I think the first six months of this project were in CAD, because that's how all the young engineers work today. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. And these are the guys that worked on the Royal Enfield Interceptor, the classic, the Meteor. So for them, not they didn't understand this technology. There that's was a, a ball game completely, steep, isn't it? Steep learning yeah. curve, but you know, look, look at what we've got as a result of it. I mean, the build quality is brilliant, isn't it? And if anyone did, they wouldn't know it was a the, replica. No, we've had a lot of help from the pioneer motorcycle community. Uh, so the chap, for example, who made this petrol tank for us, Ian Bain, he folded that from a single sheet of brass and then he soldered three baffles inside it. So at the back here, we've got the trembler coil and the battery. I was going to then, say to you about the trembler coil. Yeah. So that has that, it's still got that It's got a trembler side. coil. Yeah. And that's an original one that's been uh, restored. Brilliant. Then we've got a, a baffle that's uh, soldered in. Then we've got the fuel, so we're running on avgas. And then a baffle soldered in, and then we've got the oil in the front. But of course, with the oil coil being at the back, the HT lead's got to run all the way through the petrol tank oh. and the oil tank to come out the front. So, you know, the, the, the skill, the craftsmanship in doing that was incredible. So they put, put a tube right through there somehow. Tube right yeah, through yeah. and then um, soldered in with um, Victorian hand-held soldering irons. Yeah, the old way of doing it. The old way yeah, of doing yeah. it. Um, so quite, quite wonderful that that level of skill has been brought to it. But looking at the engine, so we have uh, as atmospheric in that valve and uh, atmospheric a mechanical in that valve, mechanical sprung, exhaust, exhaust valve. So on the rear, it's got a, an ED hub, and of course ED uh, patented that hub, and it's been used still to today. Yeah, yeah. But Albert ED was one of the founders of Royal Enfield in 1891, along with Bob Walker Smith. So quite wonderful that yeah. we were able to find an original one of those and put it in the That's in, incredible. In, in here. But the, the belt itself, we know it's now a more modern V-belt. This would it have is. originally been a leather belt. Probably. It would have been a hide belt, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and crossed over to keep tension on the front uh, um, uh, pulley. We've actually had no idea how to scale that up. We didn't have a photograph of that. Uh, we've actually over-geared it. Uh, so, you know, going flat out on the, well, it's, you can only go one speed. Yeah, that's right. And, and that's probably about 30, 35 miles an hour at fast the moment. Enough. Fast More enough, especially fast around enough. Yeah. So, um, at some point we're going to uh, down gear it, which will actually make it easier to start. Yeah. I see, you know, where the belt crosses over, there is a, probably a chance that it rubs on the side here. This is all learning curve, isn't it? It is, really? it is yeah. yeah. But the engine itself, it starts really well, doesn't it? Once it's warm. Once it's warm. So, tell, tell us about that. Right, so, starting it cold is a real challenge and you have to prime it by dropping some fuel down down here to prime it and um, then you uh, just get it to top dead center and you just flick open the valve lifter so you can spin it yep. um, it took me about quarter of an hour today to get it started cold and my legs were like jelly but after that once once it's warm it will go right. first kick. Reason being, but we've got such a long manifold here. In inlet tra inlet track. Inlet track is so long, so cold fuel, it's got to draw it up. So if you can put fuel straight in here. Yeah, that's the only way it will go. Get the bang. Yeah, but then once it's warm, you see it's heated round here. There's an offtake from the exhaust that goes round to the carburetor, which is a Longamire carburetor. And that's what heats the air fuel mixture, allows it to atomize. Um, but of course, when it's cold, that's not going to no, work. No. Um, so once it's running, it, you can stop and start very easily. 
um, but from cold is a real challenge. Can I just ask you, because people may not know, a trembler coil, the whole setup, how that works really, because it's, it's, it doesn't have a magneto as such, does it? So this relies on a, basically a battery. A battery, so there's a, a 12 volt battery in there. Um, and it sends a, a shower of sparks. So That's it right. doesn't send one single spark. It's not spark. a pulse spark, is it's it? It's not a pulse spark. It sends a shower through, which actually gives you really nice combustion. You get a better burn. You get a better yeah. burn. That's right. Yeah. Um, the spark plugs are, you know, this, pro this spark plug's probably about 60 or 70 years old. 18 mil, isn't it? Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> and uh, we've got two of them and that's it. But it's actually running quite clean. Oil is total loss. So you've, you've got a primer here. You've, you've, got, got, you've okay. got a primer, so you, you draw it up, up and then you uh, give it about a squirt of half of a, uh, a plunger full. Okay. And that should do. We estimate that will run for about 15 miles on that. Okay. Um, put too much in, of course, and you've got smoke. And if, if you're everywhere. working it hard, you can give it a bit more. You Is can. there another regulating oiler? Is there anything on the tank, a tap no. or anything? No. So it's just literally it's from here? It's just that, and, uh, and it's total loss. So it's drawing oil from here and pushing it, so it's got like, yep. a, like a pump. And, and um, so we gave it a squirt on Friday, and it's probably done about... 10 miles on that and it was running very cleanly it going was, up very the circuit. Clean. Yeah. Um, but of course you don't want to go push it too far. <laughs> no. Right Gordon, we're just going to chat about these controls on the bike. I'm going to let you tell me what each lever does and I think people will be interested by this. Okay, so here we've got left hand front brake that operates a band brake. The right hand is a valve lifter. Here we've got the advanced retard for the ignition. And to this side, we've got the revs for the carburetor. We've got that set to full revs because we haven't had time to yeah, work on developing yeah. it further. We're just running it full revs at the moment. This is the ignition off and on. That's the coil switched on, switched off. Just for people listening and looking at what we're showing at the moment. So our advanced and retired, we normally have that slightly retarded start and maybe when we go uphill, retard it slightly. Yes. And then you fully advance it again. Yeah, it's running more or less fully advanced. Yeah. And again, that's probably one of the issues with starting it cold. It could yeah. do with retarding. Uh, but we, you know, we um, got the bike ready and uh, out there to show people. Now is the time this where we're early days, we're it's early just days the first of time out really, first isn't it? proper proper yeah. run with it today at Brooklands. So now we're getting to the point where we can refine it and and and, and really develop its running further. I think you've done a great job. And you rode it really well. Gordon, how does it how does it feel to ride it? Do you know, I'm grinning from ear to <laughs> ear on it. Um, it's such a thrill to ride. Um, and you don't have to do very much when it's going, but I guess out on the road, when you've got traffic lights and roundabouts, that would be another thing altogether. Uh, one thing we didn't mention, CC. How big a range are we looking at? Um, it's around about 250 CC. It's big, isn't it? Yeah, big yeah. so it's got some thump to oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and you can feel it, it pulls. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure once we lower the gearing a little bit, it will really go like a tractor up hills. I mean, most people think of a moped, 50cc, and you pedal start that yeah. in the days of pooch maxis. So to start something of this capacity, hard work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you, well. you get leg burn. You, I can tell you getting it started, uh, if, if it doesn't catch quickly when it's cold, you really notice it. Lovely, interesting bike and uh, a real privilege to see it actually out on Brooklyn circuit here today. So thank you very much for uh, Absolute us. pleasure. Wonderful place to come to. You know, where else would you want to run this but can't, Brooklyn's can't with it. all this heritage here, you on know? On the original surface as well. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly.
Oh, 